Hi everyone. I am Mrs. Esther Rani, Assistant Professor of English, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad. In continuation with our previous session, writing skill, let us move on to the writing paragraphs also, which is very important of writing skill. Writing paragraphs are very important and what are the rules that we have to follow and what it comprises of all these things you see if you learn then you can write like a perfectly how the paragraphs and all so let us go for the next uh, slide how to organize paragraphs in document this is very directly we are going into the content organizing principles of paragraphs in document what is document document is nothing but a piece of written matter that's it whether it's a written, printed or electronic matter that provides information or evidence or that serves as an official record. That's nothing but document. Whatever it is, which is official document, official record, whether it's a written matter or a printed one or anything electronic matter, that, that should provide information or evidence. Okay. So, most probably this document which consists of large number of paragraphs. No. Consists of a few number of paragraphs to present the various aspects of intended information. Every paragraph must have information, intended information, a particular information. And a paragraph is a collection of related sentences, not unrelated sentences which deals with a single topic. Usually many articles or many written formats we have seen, like there is no relation between one paragraph to other paragraph, which is not good, which we are not going to consider as a document. So every paragraph must have a link with a topic sentence. Learning to write good paragraphs will help us as a writer to say on a track during our drafting or a revision stages. Understand? Very, it's a very good valid point. You see, good paragraphs will help a writer to stay on track. If he prove himself as a good paragraph writer, just he can go ahead with the projects or trackings. So the next is, what is the basic rule behind this paragraph writing? Everyone must know this basic, without knowing this basic rule, if you go ahead, it's of no use. It's of no use writing paragraphs. Paragraphs are very important for any article, any document. Without paragraphs, there is no document, there is uh, no article, nothing. So, definitely everyone must follow a basic rule. What is the basic rule behind this? This is nothing but... We have to keep an idea to one paragraph. Every paragraph must have one single idea. So the basic rule of this thumb, which paraphrasing is to keep one idea to one paragraph, not too many ideas in a paragraph. No. One should not go with a, too many ideas with a paragraph, which leads to ambiguity. Which leads to ambiguity. Only one idea to one paragraph. So, it begins to transition into a new idea. It belongs to means in the first paragraph, if you start with one idea, in the process of transition into new paragraph, you can like uh, get into the new idea also in the other paragraph. So, what is the basic rule? One idea to one paragraph. That's it. And the next one. Now, let us go for elements of the paragraph. Without knowing elements of the paragraph, one cannot construct a paragraph successfully. No. So, every paragraph should contain the following ones. What are they? First thing is unity. Unity. Second one is coherence. Third one is a topic sentence. Fourth one is adequate development. These are very important. So, here you see, Every paragraph must have all these things. If you, if we will see these, you see, all these traits are 
overlapped, interlinked, we can say that. That is like a, a coherence cannot uh, exist without a unity, topic sentence and adequate development. And in the same way, topic sentence must have adequate development, unity and coherence. And if you want adequate development, a topic sentence is very important, coherence is very important and unity is also, overall unity is also very important. So, all are interlinked, overlapped. Okay. Using and adopting them, these are, are indiv for our individual purposes. It will con So, if you adopt all these, you see, we can prove ourselves as effective paragraph writers. Effective paragraph writers. So, let us go or like move on to the elements of paragraph individually in detail. So, here the first element of the paragraph is unity. Unity means every sentence in a paragraph related to the topic sentence only. As you know, any article, any essay, without topic sentence, we cannot have a story or an article or whatever it is. So, article is very important. Every sentence in the paragraph must have some sort of relationship with the topic sentence, main sentence. So, here the entire paragraph should concern itself with a single focus. Means they must focus on the title, topic. So, if it begins with a one focus or major point of discussion, it should not end with the another one or wander within different ideas. No. So, when they start with one major focus or one major point of discussion, they must end with that only. Shouldn't take different ideas. That's what we call unity. Understood. And the next one is coherence. What is coherence here? Coherency is the trait that makes the paragraph easily understandable. Relationship to the reader. And you can help uh, create a coherence in your paragraphs by creating logical bridges and verbal bridges. So, how can we uh, um, help uh, the reader um, to create coherence? We have two things before us. The one first one is logical bridges. Second one is verbal bridges. If you have these two, if you can create these two in your paragraphs, definitely you can have a co coherence in between. So, here you see, what is logical bridge and what is verbal bridge? Logical bridge is nothing but same idea of the topic. Same idea of a topic is carried over the uh, from one sentence to other sentence. One idea. Again, we have to go back to the unity. So, one idea to one paragraph. It should carry from one sentence to another sentence. Say, for example, in one paragraph, if you have uh, five sentences or six sentences or ten sentences, every sentence must have the same idea of the topic. And the successive sentences means later sentences can be constructed in a parallel form. No problem. Okay. And the next one is verbal bridges. What are these verbal bridges? Verbal bridges are nothing but vocabulary. Once again, keywords. So, in one paragraph, if you want to repeat keywords, very important uh, words, you can repeat, repeat several times in several sentences. And you can go ahead with the synonyms. For one word, you can use a number of synonyms repeatedly in several sentences. And pronouns also can be referred to the nouns previous uh, sentence. If you start with the name of the person and you can uh, go ahead in other sentences like he, she, like a uh, pronounce it, they, like. Uh. So, in that way, like uh, in a uh, referral manner, you can use a number of times. And transition words can be used to link ideas from different sentences. When you are moving on from one sentence to other sentence, the transition words, linking words must be used. Means they must have some sort of a, like a connecting idea. Means connection in between word to word or sentence to sentence. 
this is what we call verbal bridge so coherence is the trait once again i am telling you it's a trait that makes the paragraph easily understandable a reader who is reading your paragraph should understand easily with the help of logical bridges and verbal bridges okay and the next one is topical sentence topical sentence a topic sentence a topic sentence is a sentence that indicates in a general way what idea or thesis the paragraph is going to deal with topic sentence is nothing but it related to the other paragraphs thesis of the paragraph although not all the paragraphs have clear cut topic sentences uh, they must have uh, either this topic sentence may be at the beginning of the paragraph or sometimes at the end of the paragraph also you can state but topic sentence is very must uh, must in the paragraph it should have some link uh, as the first sentence or the last sentence or somewhere in the middle also and it is easy way to make sure your reader to understand means the reader who is reading your paragraph is he will not deviate if you mention this topic sentence here and there in the paragraphs there is no chance of deviating himself from the paragraph so it is very important topic sentence and then here you see it's a very good general rule also okay uh, every writer will experience this if you if they feel that topic sentence is very important in that you see he is a successful paragraph writer okay and then the next one is adequate development when will get adequate development as i said you see all these four uh, things are interrelated interrelated unity coherence topic sentence and adequate development adequate development will get when it has link with these other three things topic sentence which is uh, uh, like usually topic sentence is what we call that at the beginning of the paragraph we introduce that okay the topic should be introduced or discussed fully and adequately this is very very important briefly we should not discuss about because for the sake of the reader for the better understanding of the reader we must discuss, discuss paragraph adequately elaboratedly again this varies from paragraph to paragraph so if the purpose of the author is uh, more in the paragraph adequately we can like uh, develop the idea and then here but writer should be vary from paragraph to paragraph that only have two three sentences means uh, i can't say that or we can't say that each and every paragraph must have these many sentences only sometimes sometimes a few paragraphs they'll be having only two to three sentences two to three sentences where this is not possible adequate development that's why it's good pretty good that paragraph is not fully developed it is uh, uh, if it is that short if it is a short paragraph we cannot develop adequately so here you see we can say that like every paragraph must have a uh, like uh, at least 6 to 7 or 10 sentences in the paragraph for the sake of adequate development for the better understanding of the reader okay so here formation of the controlling ideas expansion of the controlling ideas examples that we can give explanation of the examples that we can give and completion of the paragraphs idea and transition into next paragraph also we can give adequacy how we we'll get adequate development a uh, development means how can we get in the paragraph unless we follow a few things see a few steps that we can follow here first one is formulation of the controlling idea means uh, like uh, the idea what we have in a paragraph that we have to go with and explanation of a controlling idea means we need to explain the idea behind that very clearly along with the examples and explaining the example actually and completion of the paragraphs idea or transition into the next how you can transit uh, one idea into 
other paragraph that also very important then we get adequacy we can develop adequately understand so in this way we can go ahead with that so paragraph development is uh, nothing but see if we have if we follow a few methods as already we have discussed all these things once again i want to put in front of you what are the methods to make sure our paragraphs well developed it's not so easy to say that my paragraph is well developed no so we have to follow a few things uh, then only we can say that my paragraph is well developed a few methods are there in front of us what are they first thing is use examples and illustrations examples a few incidents you you have to use in a paragraph the second one is data cited means a few facts statistics tables details and other things means figures that you have to give in the paragraph and quotations a few quotations also we can invite in the paragraph anecdotes anecdote means a story story also we can give and we can define a few terms in the paragraph difficult terms if you have given in the paragraph it's a, it's not a like a bad thing if you define them and compare a few things and contrast contrast with others and evaluate causes and reasons means give a reason for the reasons and causes that you have given in the paragraph and the next one is examine effects and consequences okay so you can like uh, explain what are the effects and consequences in the paragraph related to the topic sentence and initially you can describe the topic and put all the events in a chronological order time segment we can say that hmm? so everything chronology chronological order is uh, we have to keep uh, complete event so if you follow all these methods so we can say confidently that my paragraph is well developed okay and then here i would like to conclude uh, this with a uh, uh, a few statements uh, once again i would like to like uh, repeat for a good paragraph every paragraph must have one idea one new idea or a point so separate paragraph can serve to contrast sides in a debate or different points in the argument or any other differences also and then when you are ending your uh, introduction or starting your conclusion they must be in a separate paragraph introduction is a separate paragraph and conclusion also must be in a separate paragraph that's what i said introductory and concluding material must always be in a new paragraphs only so students here you see if you follow all these rules you can prove yourself as a better paragraph writers okay all the best children thank you thank you one and all for following me throughout the session thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates